Welcome back to CG Figures. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, and I'm going to showcase some code that I've been working on recently. I find myself using hair particle systems very, very frequently for a lot of different models, usually for something where I want to put atoms on a specific location, such as graphene or a crystal lattice, but also for other examples where I might want to do something with a Boolean cutting through, say, a cell membrane or a phospholipid bilayer. Particle systems have a lot of utility there, but they can be a bit of a nuisance to set up. And so to that end, I've been working on some code. I'm hoping to eventually turn it into an add-on. It's not quite there yet, but if you want to explore what I have, the link to the GitHub page is in the video description. So I'll go ahead and showcase some of the features. For those of you who don't know how to code or are not familiar with code in Blender, don't worry, that's not what this video is about. It's just going to be showcasing how you would use this code and why you might. So we'll open a new window, change the text editor, and just open whatever pathway you have for the code and the actual file. In this case, I've called it quickparticles.py. You can run code at any time by moving your mouse over here and hitting Alt-P, or you can just come up to this little play button. So if I grab any object in my scene and run the code, it'll automatically add a hair particle system, and it'll by default just add in a UV sphere to your scene and assume that that was what you wanted. If you don't use two objects, then it doesn't really know what to do, so it's just going to add in that sphere. Now, one of the things that this is doing very well is it's setting up everything that you might want out of a very specifically located particle system. Namely, if we come down to that particle system, you can see it's created it, it has a name, Mesh Particles. It's setting it to hair, using the advanced options, changing the source from face, the default value, to verts. The number is the exact number of verts in the target object, and it's also using the modifier stack, unchecking random order, changing to render as object, and choosing the right object that you want. And it's also doing one other nice little thing, which is it's adding a density vertex group. So it's creating the original object or it's using the original object to create a vertex group and then using that vertex group for density. That is very, very useful if you're going to use Booleans to cross section through things where you're actually just showing the particles and not the underlying mesh. And I have separate videos on that if you're interested. Now I'll showcase some of the more interesting features of this, namely that let's say you have a target particle and you wanna put it on something. So I'm going to delete all the objects in the scene. I'll add in an icosphere and I'll add in a default cube. Let's say for instance, I wanna use this cube as the particle on this icosphere. So I can simply grab the cube, shift and select the icosphere and whichever item is the active item or the one with the yellow halo on it, that is the one it's going to put the particles on. So if I run this script again, you can see it's now used the cube and it's put it on every single vert. And that's just something that I find very useful because it does it very quickly and it's something I find myself doing quite frequently. You can also see that even though we added a different particle system before, it's actually not going to interfere. So now if I want to say add a cylinder, move it to the side and then put this cylinder on the cube, I can do that and it won't really raise any stink about it. So that works nicely out of the box. The thing that I'm very, very pleased with though about this is that you can actually use this to create collections. So I'll go ahead, add in, let's just say a plane. I'm going to subdivide it a few times, and then I'm going to add in three different spheres, and I'll differentiate them by having them have different colors. So I'll move this one over here, just control one for subdivision surface and duplicate that twice. Now I'll add different materials to each one. We'll make, sorry, that's a particle system. We'll add a blue material to the first one, and we'll make them all metallic coming into preview mode so you can see them. We'll make the next one green, again, metallic. And finally, the last one we'll make red. Now, normally, if I wanted to set this up, I'd have to move all of these into a collection, then set up the particle system the way that I want, change the collection, and usually I like to enable random for the collection so that you can just use different seed values. But now, if I simply grab every object that I want to use as a particle, and then select the object that I want to put them on and run the code, you can see it sets it up automatically. Now, this is a little bit too big, but again, this is a very easy thing to change. Just come down to the particle system, change the render settings to scale. This also uses the Boolean cutaway, but when you're doing collections right now, it's randomizing them. So I intend in the final add-on to have a toggle available where it sets all these up as separate particle systems, and then you can have everything in the same place. And I'll showcase what that means with a different plane. So go ahead, add another plane, move that out on the Y, and we'll just subdivide that. Similarly, if I were to grab this one and this one and run that again, you can see now I have this particle system. And we'll set up booleans for both of these and I'll show you what I was discussing. 
So adding in a default cube, scaling it up, and I'll use this as the cutter object. So if I come to the modifier properties and then move the Boolean above the particle system for both of these, what you'll see is two different things. If I do it here and move it through, you'll see it's cutting through that plane very, very nicely, and I'm not seeing the particles appear at the edge. If I actually come down to the particle settings and remove the group, you can see it's now adding in these extra little particles, and that's because it doesn't have any sense of what to do. The Boolean is creating verts there. It doesn't know not to put the particles. So by adding in the group automatically, it just cuts that out of the picture. This tends to work very, very nicely if you aren't even showing the emitter at all, and your objects are close packed, something like this. Then you can just cut through them very, very cleanly, and you don't have to worry about extra mesh as you might see in uh, this specific case. So we'll remove that, and I'll show that cutting again. So you can see that they're doubling up on each other right there, but if I go ahead and add the density back, no doubling at all. Unfortunately, with the collections, that doesn't necessarily work because what happens is it'll actually start to randomize the colors and you'll see it jump through there. So in the final version of this code, I intend to make a toggle available so you can say, I want to use this with Booleans, and then it will create separate particle systems for this, this, and this using a random selection. It's not, unfortunately, as modular. You lose a little bit of that seed capability, but it does do it all right out of the box, and so that's just a nice feature to have. So I've set this up largely to work with things like graphene or crystal lattices or any number of other different things. But for those who are interested, again, the code is available on GitHub. If you want to explore some of the options for this or you have any recommendations or features you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. And with that, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. And until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.